it that time already? Alright, better get another run going. I think consumables only one this time. That sounds interesting. What's a consumable? Uh, you know, items that disappear when you use them. Stuff like throwing knives, grenades, fire bombs, poison dagger. Fire bombs. Oh, hi honey. I didn't realize you were awake. Fire bombs. Uh... I guess we're doing fire bombs. Start. So, a little backstory on this one. My wife and I don't play video games together very often, due to us having different interests, and my wife getting a bad case of vertigo or nausea if the game isn't well suited to her. First person games are almost always a no-go, so we usually resort to third person or 2D games. One day, she came up to me and asked if she could play Dark Souls with me. She said that she had noticed how important it was to me, and she wanted to see what made it so special that I had dumped over 800 hours into it. Uh, that's just the first game, but don't tell her that. Anyway, I sat her down, gave her a few hints that any new player could benefit from to help smooth out the learning curve, and set her loose upon Lordran. It was a travesty. But not in the way you're thinking. The first hour or two was spent like most new players, exploring Firelink and getting used to the controls. She made her way up to Undead Berg, fighting for every inch, and slowly but surely gaining ground and learning the skills necessary to eventually conquer Dark Souls. I asked her what build she had ended up going with, curious how she was managing to kill all the enemies with such ease. I expected she had chosen either a mage to plank down the enemies from range, or maybe a barbarian who could slug enemies into paste. But no. She had chosen the mage class, sure, but she wasn't using magic. No, she had found her own playstyle. She was playing the faux pyromancer. Firebombs. She, she was using firebombs. I was baffled. I've always had this fear that all gamers have, that mentality that you might need all your potions or consumables later, so you hold on to them. This being the case, I'd never really used firebombs outside of one or two occasions. Amazing woman that she is, she just marched ahead, burninating enemies as they popped out of the woodwork like they were nothing. We made our way to the first co-op boss, the Taurus Demon, and I expected her to cut and run, to panic as so many new players before her had. Surely Dark Souls would show her what it meant to be- Oh. <laughs> what the hell is going on? What do you mean? It is absolutely not supposed to be this easy. <laughs> it's not? Okay, well, this has certainly been interesting, but surely she's almost out of firebombs by now. She's been throwing them around like they're nothing, and with them being as strong as they are- Only 50 souls? Miyazaki, what is this? Anyway, long story made longer, my wife continued her rampage through Laundrad, smiting boss after boss as I watched in awe and terror. Bosses that caused me to rage quit or spend hours of frustration trying to solve, and here she was, first trying everything that came her way. It wasn't even just a firebomb, she was innovative with items and spells I had cast away as useless or gimmicky. What does an oral decoy do? Uh, I don't know. I think it makes a distracting noise or something. And you said this boss fights in this wall space? Yeah. Alright. Oh, uh, I think oral decoy only works on the little enemies. No, it works on him. What? I am married to a legend. So that brings us to today. We've started our playthrough of Dark Souls 2, and you can bet that she immediately found the firebomb vendor. I wish I could imitate the noise she made when she found out there was elemental firebombs, but I wouldn't be doing it justice. Needless to say, whenever we play anything Souls-like, where are the firebombs is the first question asked. Which is why today, we're going to honor my wife's fanaticism and dedication with the firepot only run. I know I said we were going to do a consumable only run, and we are, we're just being very selective about which consumable we're using. Let's go over the rules. First, we can only use consumables to deal damage. In our case, we're going to aim for just using firepots. Should be interesting. Second, all other equipment that doesn't cause direct damage, such as armors, charms, rings, etc., are allowed. And third, no cheating or exploits, as per usual. I'd go over the build, but there isn't one. There are no armors that affect damage firepots deal, nor are there any charms or rings. Other consumables, such as throwing daggers, scale with dex, but this doesn't seem to apply to firepots. The only thing worth noting is how we can acquire our weapon of choice. Firepots are sold by merchants. Namely merchant NPCs from the Three, the Iron Ones, the House of Splendor, and the Order of the Betrayer. And they all cost 100 gold each. As I feared last video, we're going to be racing our wallets on this one. So, since there's nothing really special to consider, let's just get into it. First, our name. I call myself Dynamite. D do you get it? It's because I use bombs and I look like a dinosaur. We started as a pauper, because fire bombs. Then we skip ahead to picking the three, because fire bombs. And eventually, we'll go around the map stealing all the items we can find so that we can sell them. Because firebombs. Before we get to that point though, let's see what kind of run we're in for. Three hits. The Sodden Knight dies in three hits. My god, this is Dark Souls all over again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Well, let's keep on going and see what happens. We sell all our stolen goods, and get more firepots. 
We can also level up, but I have no idea what to put it into. Willpower? Dexterity? After a little bit of testing, it turns out fire pots are a whole thing on their own. When it hits an enemy, it bursts open into several individual pieces. Each of these pieces, if they continue to hit the enemy, will cause fire damage. There's also a splash effect if you throw the fire pot close to the floor that covers the ground with additional fire damage as well. In case you were wondering how the math works on all that, it's complicated. Let's just accept that you want to hit your target square on, and then hit them with all the shrapnel you can manage. That said, it doesn't look like any stats directly affect the damage the fire pots cause, so I'll just dump into willpower and worry about it later. Heading on over to the queen, it's much of the same. She only takes about 10 pots, and she drops 2500 gold, which means that we made our money back and then some. If the rest of the bosses can keep that up, we shouldn't have to grind out gold at any point. Pressing on, the alchemist goes down without much issue. No, I'm doing the fire pots. Get your own gimmick. Moving on to the Cyclops, he's just as easy. He takes a few more fire pots than the other bosses, sure, but he gives me enough spending money that we can replenish and overstock our supply. Actually, that brings up a little problem we're having. I can't buy anymore. Fire pots cap out at 99, which poses two problems. First, if a boss takes more than 99 fire pots, I'm gonna be out of luck. Second, I now have to carry my money around with me. Before, I only needed to carry it from boss fight to a merchant. Now, if I die, I'll lose 10% of my funds and hundreds of potential fire bombs. Great. Jester is easy peasy. With all my levels poured into willpower, I can throw pots all day and just burn them down to cinders. And take one for the road! On to the worm. Fire pots are more effective than I expected, but not as effective as I would like. We're starting to see the boss health pool increase, which is worrisome. Let's skip the Tree of Men for now and go for some of the later game bosses. Something about the Tree of Men has me worried. Call it a gut feeling. Inquisitor is upsettingly easy. Honestly, it was harder to get to him than it was to fight him. The Lamb isn't too bad either. We're definitely starting to get to the point where we might run out of fire bombs during a boss fight, but not yet. Up next is the Dried King, one of the more fire-focused bosses in the game. Let's hope this works. Well, that looks like more than 1% of his health. Thankfully, with a little testing, it turns out that throwing the fire pots closer to his bottom half will get us the most ticks of damage. Must be a larger hitbox or something. In any case, once we figure this out, he doesn't take too many more pots. That worried me for a bit there. Speaking of fire-resistant bosses, let's go back to the tree. Turns out my gut feeling was right. He's actually harder than the Dried King, mainly due to his tiny hitboxes not giving me much to work with. It's really hard to focus on everything happening in his arena and worry about getting the right arc for my fire pots. This is actually the first boss I died to, if that says anything. Second try goes much better. There's a great animation here where you can get off about 5 or 6 pots between his attacks, which really helps cut down the time spent fighting this boss. Also, thank god we went forward and got the double jump. I didn't think about it the first time through, but we can just jump to the other side. Duh. After this change in strategy, he goes down nicely. Husk time. He goes down no problem. He'd have gone down even easier, but I was a bit distracted by my salt bat over there. I may have fallen off a cliff at one point. Little side tidbit, you can actually cancel your throwing animation by rolling. I had no idea. That's kinda nice, might use that at some point. The stench is next. He's not bad, but I'll be damned if I can kill him. It's the minions that keep getting in the way of my bombs, poisoning me, and just overall being a nuisance. Tony, we talked about this. Fuck you, boyo! After taking a minute to recenter myself, it goes better. He's really not so bad, and at this point I have enough gold that I can just fire away without worrying how many fire pots I use. Wait. Ah! Get off! Get off! Get off! Now that we've got the Redshift brand, let's give Kran a try. He's pretty beefy, and the added aggression certainly isn't helping things. If we take advantage of his buffing phase, though, we can really get some solid damage in, and eventually net ourselves a victory. Next is the Prince. I was worried about this one, and apparently for good reason. The maximum oomph I seem to be able to get from my firebombs is about 25 damage, and the Prince has 3500 HP. Plug those numbers into your brain calculator, and you get about 140. So yeah, that's problematic. However, I have an idea. What if I come to the merchant with empty pockets? It's worth wondering if the merchant is the limiting factor here, or if it's my actual inventory. Alright, so far so good. Well, I'll be damned. Did anyone know about this? Is this a world first? Do I submit a bug report? Needless to say, this changes everything. Goodbye gold, I'm investing in oil. oil. After a grueling few minutes, we finally... That's not good. I really can't afford to die to this guy. Every attempt is going to cost me over a hundred pots. I have some items I can sell, sure, so we're not stuck yet, but I really need to take this seriously if we're going to be able to push forward. Oh, thank god. We got to restock our fire pots and... Uh-oh. 
So before everyone freaks out and starts commenting about how this is clearly a bug because the game crashed, I just want to point out that I've had this problem before with other items. This crash seems to happen when you overlap too many items on top of each other, and then try to pick them back up. So, while I agree that this makes me pretty sus, I'm going to continue to argue that this isn't a glitch. Exploit, maybe, but glitch, no. If you decide to do this run yourself, you could always drop a full stack of fire bombs just inside the boss arena, then go buy another stack. In this way, you could use all 99 of your fire bombs inside the fight, then grab the drop stack to replenish your stock. This would keep your inventory below the 99 maximum that the merchant imposes on you, probably for inflation reasons, which would keep your run baby white kitten pure. I did test that method once or twice before settling on my current overstock solution, so I can state with certainty that it works. It's just tedious. Anywho, semantics aside, let's push forward. The coveted is beefy as well, with only about 30 damage per pot. And since they have 3000 HP, that's about 100 pots. Let's get to work. Jesus, I just can't win with this guy. Even when we bond over how much we hate this axe, I still can't beat him. I'm gonna have to give it another go, but after that we need to chase another boss. Fuck! Alright, let's hit up Karstraw. Jesus, even he's pretty bad. I mean, bad for Karstraw. In comparison to the other bosses, he's nothing, but at least he's raising his own bar a bit. Alright, this is the run. It kinda has to be. Oh, thank god! After restocking with glorious, glorious fire pots, we go after Maul. She doesn't drop any gold, so I don't like having to fight her, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Son of a bitch. Alright, hold on a minute. Let me switch up my controls. There we go, that's better. My right bumper was starting to act funny. I think my throwing arm is dying on me. On to the witch. Honestly, after all we've gone through at this point, she feels easy. Thank god for small health pulls. Get dunked! The unskinned and the architect are interesting. The architect has high resistance to fire damage, but you can kill the unskinned without much issue. The interesting part is that he drops gold upon death, which means that if you were running low on fire pots at this point, you could kill him, bell out, buy more pots, then rinse and repeat until satisfied. For us though, we kill them on the first try. I love that the merchants just know what I want now. They hover my cursor over the fire pots before I can even ask. Back again, huh? Yep. More fire pots. Yep. Mm hmm. The Forgotten King is a bit hectic. I'll need to focus fire to make this one a bit easier. Uh, the judge is really beefy. The good news is, like the unskinned and architect, you can replenish your coffers if you kill at least one of them. Not as easy as it sounds, but still doable. Thankfully, after a try or two, we're able to beat the judge down after an intense game of leapfrog. Scourge is disappointingly easy. Play keep away, throw your bombs. Simple enough. The nameless god, though. God is difficult. He still hits us pretty hard, and I'm having a bit of trouble dodging his homing missiles. However, it's clear to me that this is completely doable. It's just going to take some patience. Okay. Yep. Alright. Alright. Thank you. Here, have a party favor. And that's it. Can you beat Salt and Sanctuary with just fire pots? And by extension, just consumables? Much to my chagrin, yes. Yes, you can. Mrs. Lemon would be proud. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Well, hello there. Surprised to see me so soon? Yeah, me too. For this month, I've decided to challenge myself. In the spirit of the holidays, and in celebration of this god-awful year finally coming to an end, I'm pushing myself to put out one challenge run video every week in December. The season of salt, if you will. It's going to be rough, but I think I can do it. Worst case scenario, we'll just get our usual every other week and call it good enough. Thanks again to Hesiolite, Oh Snap, and Connor Hassel for suggesting this run. It's not quite how I originally envisioned it, but as I said earlier, if I could beat the game with just one type of consumable, having every consumable available to you should make the run a piece of cake. For next week, I'm going to do a run that was suggested way back when. Poison only run certainly different from anything I've ever tried with Salt and Sanctuary before, so I'm excited to see how that turns out. I'm not quite sure what we'll do after that, but you have all been suggesting runs like mad, so I'm not going to run out of material anytime soon. As always, if you would do me a great kindness, please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps YouTube spread the word about the channel, and helps our little corner of the internet grow. Also, if you're new here, why not subscribe? I upload new videos and challenge runs pretty regularly, so if you're bored on the weekend, you'll know you'll get at least 15 minutes of entertainment to look forward to. Probably. Also, as always, I'd love to hear from you all in the comments down below. Feedback is always appreciated, and if you've got any other games you want me to play or challenge run ideas, I'm always searching the comments for the next new hotness. There's lots of other ways to reach out to me too if you like. Pictures are on the screen, links in the description. And, as always, if you want to learn a useless skill like me in Master Salt and Sanctuary, the link to my self-made wiki is in the description too. May it treat you well. And that's it. Thanks again for stopping by, and I hope to see you all soon.
let the season of salt begin.